Gentleman's back his time. The chair recognizes the gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. Butterfield, for five minutes. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, the Congressional Black Caucus will present uh, eight or nine speakers on the Democratic side in just a few minutes. I am the first of many who will be speaking. Uh, we come to the floor today to express our deepest sympathy and support to the family of Freddie Gray and to the citizens of Baltimore, Maryland. Mr. Speaker, the events in Baltimore are not just about police misconduct. It's about pervasive poverty. It's about unemployment, lack of opportunity, hopelessness, and despair. Since the death of Michael Brown in Ferguson nearly nine months ago, more than 25 bills have been introduced by members of the CBC that address the need for law enforcement accountability. Today, I call on my House and Senate colleagues to put aside partisanship and take up some or all of these bills. This issue has an impact on all of us. We must address economic disparities that face black communities all across the nation. Baltimore, Mr. Speaker, is not unique. The economic climate in black America that divide and, and the divide that has persisted for generations is due largely to our country's history of disparate treatment of African Americans and lack of opportunity. While much of the country has experienced an economic recovery over the last six years, it has not reached the African American community. Recently, the CBC and the Joint Economic Committee released a report on the economic challenges facing African Americans. African Americans are struggling and continue to face high rates of persistent poverty, unemployment, long-term unemployment, as well as significantly lower incomes and sl slower, slower wealth accumulation. More than 400 counties in the United States suffer poverty rates greater than 20%. These rates have persisted now for more than 30 years. The median income of African-American households is $34,000, $24,000 less than the median income of white households. The median net worth of white households is 13 times the level for black households. Black Americans are almost three times more likely to live in poverty. At 10.1%, the current unemployment is double the rate for white Americans. Black, Ameri black Americans currently face an unemployment rate higher than the national unemployment rate reached during the recession. African Americans are less likely to obtain education beyond high school than white students. They are less likely to earn a college degree. Even among college graduates, blacks face worse job prospects than whites. The unemployment rate for black workers with at least a bachelor's degree is 5.2 percent compared to 2.9 percent for white workers. 44 percent of black Americans own a home compared to 74 percent of whites. In my home state of North Carolina, the unemployment rate for African Americans is 9.9 percent based on an unemployment rate of 3.2 percent for whites. The poverty rate for African Americans is 27.5 percent, uh, while for whites is 12.6. Right here, Mr. Speaker, in the District of Columbia, the median household income for African Americans is $38,300 for whites and $115,900 uh, for, for blacks, for, for whites. A gap of $77,000. The D.C. poverty rate is 27.4 percent for African Americans compared to 7.6 percent for whites. Colleagues, these statistics tell the story. These numbers are staggering, troubling, and problematic. It's time for a renewed focus on blacks in America and a need for real solutions on issues that have persistently plagued our communities. I will end, Mr. Speaker, by quoting some excerpts from President Johnson's 1964 State of the Union speech. And he said, unfortunately, many Americans live on the outskirts of hope, some because of their poverty and some because of their color, all too many because of both. Our task is to help replace their despair with opportunity. This administration today, he said, here and now declares unconditional war on poverty in America. And so I, I urge this Congress and all Americans to join with me in that effort, he said. It will not be a short or easy struggle. No single weapon or strategy will, su will suffice. But we shall not rest until the war is won. President Johnson said the richest nation on earth can afford to win it. We cannot afford to lose it. $1,000 invested in salvaging an unemployable youth today can return $40,000 or more in his lifetime. 
President Johnson said poverty is a national problem requiring improved national organization and support. But this attack, to be effective, must also be organized at the state and local level, must be supported and directed by state and local efforts. He said, for the war against poverty will not be won here in Washington. It will be won in the field, in every private home, in every public office, from the courthouse to the White House. The program I shall propose, he said, will emphasize this cooperative approach to help that one-fifth of all American families with incomes too small to even meet their basic needs. End of quote. President Lyndon Baines Johnson, January 6, 1964, from this chamber. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield back. Gentlemen's time.